almost every single day I get questions regarding what kind of gear I use, what kind of cameras, lenses, intervalometers, filters, tripods, motorized system, etc, etc. So I thought I should make a video explaining you the most important things I use for time-lapse photography on a daily basis. I also want to add a few things to the discussion regarding cheap gear versus expensive gear. But first, let's see what's in my camera bag. All right, so here you see my camera bag, which is a Think Tank Airport takeoff, which I've had for a while. It's pretty good if you're flying a lot, but the interesting things are inside and here it is. So my main camera is Sony a7R2 with a battery grip. It's pretty much the best camera you can get at the moment for time-lapse photography. The only drawbacks is that it's a little bit slow and it also has very bad battery life. Secondary camera is this little brother, Sony a7S, which is very similar to the a7R2, but it has, I think, 12 megapixels versus 42. A lot less uh, megapixels, but that makes it really good in low light. If you are, for example, filming uh, Northern Lights, this is a really good camera for that. My third camera is this Canon 70D, which I don't use that much anymore, unfortunately. And the one I'm filming with right now, which is the GH4, which I use mainly for filming, but also a little bit for time-lapse photography as well. Okay, so in terms of lenses, I have, again, this one, which is uh, my main lens, 70 to 40 millimeter Canon F4L, which is a pretty basic lens. I think it's the cheapest L lens you can get, but still, it does the job for me. It has a nice range, F4, that's okay for me when shooting landscapes. For me, it's good enough. And here you have the Sigma 20 millimeter F1.4, so insanely bright. And this in combination gives you so bright images of the night sky that it's amazing and a really good combo. This lens and the two Sony bodies are not mine personally. They belong to the production company I work for called Turbine Films. So make sure to check us out on Facebook. Uh, we do some really cool stuff. And then I have these Rokinon lenses, the 35 millimeter, the 85 millimeter, and the one I'm filming with right now, which is the 24 millimeter, all T 1.5 or basically F 1.4. So really bright lenses. When you have them wide open, they are not that sharp, but if you stop them down a little bit, they're totally fine. And it's really nice to have manual lenses when you're doing time-lapse photography because you will get less flickering and it's nice and easy to change the aperture. My last lens is Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter almost falling apart here uh, but it's still holding up pretty well and if you have a crop sensor camera and yeah it's it's nice it's soft in the edges but quite nice in terms of adapters i have for the gh4 by the way i have the speed booster for these i have the metabones standard adapters to canon uh two of them and I also have this little guy right here, the Visilex MD Throttle, which is a variable filter. So you don't have to have a filter on the outside of the lens. You can have it here instead, which makes it easier uh, if you're using lenses like the Sigma one, which doesn't have the, the standard filter thread. Here I have a ball head from Serp, really nice and handy. Use it quite a lot actually, together with the Serp Genie. I'm going to show you my other motion control system, which is more advanced than this one, but this is really lightweight. And if you add the Genie Mini, you get to access. It's pretty cheap and, and easy to use. So if you're a beginner, this is definitely a good start. Here I have some cleaning stuff, a blower and some cloths. Here is my filters. So my most used filter is this one, BWND 3.0. So it's really, really dark. Uh, but great for daytime long exposures. I also have this Variandi from Serp. You can choose what, what kind of strength you want on it. And then I have the some variable filters from Kokin, which is a pretty cheap brand, so I have a few of them. I don't find myself using them that often anymore uh, since the Sony cameras have such a great dynamic range. But when I was using the 70D, I used it a lot because I didn't want to blow out the skies. And then last but not least is my battery pack. And since the battery is so bad in the Sony cameras, I have one of these and this. Uh, so basically you have a dummy battery 
which you plug into your your camera and then you take the USB and plug it into your battery pack like this wait for it to turn on and that's it you have a hundred percent battery so basically you can get as long of a battery life you want to this can last for days so you can just keep shooting and shooting and shooting so that was basically my camera bag I have some batteries here memory cards but that's it let's show you my motion control system it's called the iFootage uh, S1A3 and it's pretty advanced but well, basically you have two motors one of these which drags the one axis along the dolly and then you have this uh, bigger motor which is uh, pan and tilt and then you have two large V-lock batteries uh, which last forever you can use this for weeks and also a wireless controller so it's a really nice motion control system I would highly recommend it and to use this you have a dolly which is called the iFootage shark slider which is really small and handy and light it's made of carbon uh, and you can have these extension tubes I have four of them which you just put on the ends uh, you can make it as long as you want it to be this is the best slider I've tried I also have a couple of other sliders which is the Serp magic carpet which is more basic than uh, the one you just saw uh, it does the job it's not as stable it doesn't give you as many possibilities but it's nice and lightweight and you can put it in your bag and if you want something cheap this is maybe the way to go if you can't afford the other one and for the dollies you need tripods so these are my main ones it's called the iFootage Wild Bull T7 I believe and these are really really cool tripods they are uh, made of carbon so they're quite lightweight uh, so these are pretty cool too I have another one which is the Benro tripod I would not recommend this this is a horrible tripod I bought it half a year ago these are really bad they won't tighten and they won't loosen this thing is falling apart the video head is also a Benro uh, model which is pretty nice and stable uh, so this video head in, in combination with the iFootage tripod is pretty nice but this uh, tripod I would avoid using it I also have a tripod uh, which I'm recording on which is a really nice Manfrotto a lightweight carbon tripod which is more basic but it's been with me for all my time-lapse journeys and if you want something really really lightweight that's maybe the way to go so that was everything in my camera bag and tripods and motorized systems and all that but I also wanted to add a few things like I said regarding cheap gear and expensive gear when it comes to time-lapse photography I've shown you a lot of gear and you might be thinking that's so expensive I can't afford all that do I need all that to make a good time-lapse and my answer is simple no definitely not you don't need all that you don't need half of it you would be stupid if you bought that as a beginner I've heard time-lapse photographers from, from beginners to professionals who have said that you need a full-frame camera to make a good time-lapse. In my opinion, that's bullshit. I think that in 99% of the cases, a cheaper DSLR will do the job just fine. There is generally too much of a focus on gear in the time-lapse community today, focusing on edge-to-edge -edge sharpness, dynamic range, uh, resolution and all that and too little focus on what really matters in my opinion which is composition, light, how you edit it together, uh, innovation, bringing something new. We have seen very little innovation in the timeless genre over the past year. We seem to be kind of stuck in this five minute video uh, with nice pictures just put together with some cinematic music and I'm guilty of this myself. My last video in Norway was kind of like that. So in my new projects, I'm trying to do things a bit different. And I think that's what the focus should be on how to bring something new, how to challenge yourself, how to be creative, not what kind of gear you have. With any kind of DSLRs, you can shoot in more than 4K in RAW, which gives you endless possibilities anyway. I'm not saying that you should never buy expensive gear at all. 
in some situations it might be useful and in other situations it might even be necessary but your general focus should be on the image you're taking not the gear you're taking the image with i think that's the main focus you should have if you want to be a successful time lapse photographer in the long run take for example my last major video which you might have seen called norway it was shot on this entirely a canon 70d which retails for, I think, $800 or so. Tokina 11216, which is $400 or so. So you could easily get this for less than a thousand bucks if you buy it on eBay. And that's what I shot it on. I had an external intervalometer, which I bought on eBay for like five bucks. And I had this, the Serb Genie uh, motor, uh, which is, I think, $800. And I had a homemade dolly. Uh, and at the cheapest tripod I could find and that's it I've gotten thousands of comments on that video but I have never ever seen a single complaint regarding the image quality of it and for that video I chose to put my money into going to a great location instead of getting the good gear it's better to be at a good location with bad gear than at a bad location with good gear my suggestion when starting out as a time-lapse photographer invest in experience so that was me showing off my gear uh, and at the same time ranting about people focusing too much on gear so i guess that makes me kind of a hypocrite anyway i hope it was interesting and thank you for watching